All right, guys and girls, it's Jerningham here. They're talking about the third wave of coronavirus coming into the UK. I think France and Germany have got the, vi the virus already. They're spreading there. They're talking about a third vaccine for the UK. Because of this, if this coronavirus comes over here, the third wave, we may have to start again. We may have to go for a third wave. Does that mean more lockdowns? Does that mean more, more people may be out of work? Does that mean more people run out of jobs there been no jobs to anybody does that mean a lot of destruction in the world that are going through all this now where is the third wave it's in france is it in germany is it in spain we already know it's in france and germany if it comes to england or is it always the third wave already here in the pardon me the uk and we don't know about it so that's what they're worried about the first vaccine and the second vaccine worked the second vaccine is the booster. The first vaccine should have worked for all of us. And some people say the second one would work, but after another two weeks of having it injected into you. Some people won't get the vaccines, but we're going to be listening a bit more to what this lady's going to be saying on the news about these vaccines and what's going to go on. Susie, you picked out um, the Telegraph, first of all. The headline is over 70s to get booster jabs from September. <clears throat> so they're talking about a third jab here, aren't they? Yes, so uh, those of us who have already had the three million who've already had their two jabs may be getting another one in a few months' time. Uh, and those of us who haven't had, uh, when you have the first one, you may be getting another couple coming up. So what we're talking about here is that uh, the government's on target to have offered jabs to every adult before July. Uh, and that then, therefore, they're working on getting boosters, which would deal with um, some of the new variants. Uh, in time for autumn. Um, there's a couple of issues with that. The first is that the existing vaccination campaign, uh, a lot of it yeah. is managed by volunteers. I had my vaccine yesterday, and there must have been a dozen volunteers at a drive through site pushing people through, and a, a couple of medics. And if you've got to vaccinate the whole country again in a few months, you've got to have a system other than, you know, this this army of very well-meaning people can't stand out in the rain all damn year. They've got to be given a few days off, I thought. Uh, and the other is the fact that Jonathan Van Tam uh, is quoted in this piece saying that there's going to be a requirement in September for boosters, which does... Government says that, um, protests are outside a school, West Yorkshire. Teacher showed student a cartoon of... Or who have refused the vaccination well, So we're not out of the woods by any means, it would appear. Well, yes, and I, I guess the other reason for having a booster jab, Tim, is to try to combat some of the variants uh, that we're seeing emerge. Mm. Um, and that reminds us of the other challenge to try and make sure those variants don't spread in this country or come to this country. Absolutely. And um, one thing that would be helpful for us, though, and this is another uh, part of the Telegraph story, is that um, we expect probably to have about eight vaccines um, in the UK and um, vaccine armory by the end of the year. Eight vaccines. We're used to at the moment talking about did you have the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine or were you a Pfizer uh, beneficiary? And, you know, quite soon we'll have an awful lot more choice. And of course, it may well be the case that different vaccines work slightly better, slightly worse with some of the variants that uh, will have emerged by then. So that just gives Britain more flexibility to respond to whatever this extraordinary virus throws at us. And, and let's turn to a different story on the front of the eye, but still related to the vaccination programme, um, Susie. Uh, their headline says, UK's vaccine revolution set to transform healthcare. So they're talking about some of the benefits in, in the technology wow. for some of these vaccines. It could help in the treatment of, of other illnesses and diseases. Yeah, because what's happened is a result of uh, the, the richest parts of the world being threatened by a deadly disease. They've thrown the kitchen sink at it in terms of the medical expertise and the science and the pharma and trying to get things manufactured before they were approved and so on. Uh, and that means that they've found some whizzy new ways of doing things and able to sort of program our immune systems to deal with the outside spike of a virus without having to infect us with a, a weakened form of that virus, which is how vaccines used to work. So, um, you know, the possibilities for that therapy being used for other conditions that affect the cells in our body, whether it's diabetes or epilepsy or heart disease or cancer, it's absolutely immense. Well, yeah, and, that's, and that is an exciting um, prospect, isn't it, Tim? And given how 
appallingly awful this pandemic has been, if there's any good news that comes out of it, that would be um, amazing. Yeah, and if history is any guide, you know, the benefit should be quite considerable. You, you look throughout history, you know, the Second World War, you know, the massive effort that was needed to defeat Nazism, uh, this huge investment in new technologies and equipment had massive benefits afterwards for civilian um, applications. And, you know, we haven't gone through anything quite as big as a, as, as a war, but a huge convulsion like this does force business, science, and other innovators <coughs> to rethink how they... Sorry, but I got the, the, the cough guys, you know, to live through the last year and you know, face the, uh, the death toll and the misery that many people have suffered. But there, there will be benefits, as there really always or are, um, from historical episodes like this. And the government has this new advanced... Um, the research projects agency. This was a brainchild of the former government advisor Dominic Cummings, someone I'm, I've had criticisms of, but this is a really good idea. It's putting more government money at the heart of projects, research projects that really will be important to the future of the nation, our competitiveness and our security. So, yeah, one good story here uh, when, when we've had to deal with so many uh, that upset us. Indeed, and that's kind of talking about how science might develop post-pandemic. The Times is focusing on the economy, isn't it, Susie? They're talking about a plan to try and kick-start spending. Um, the Chancellor apparently suggesting that uh, shops could open late to get us all out spending. Yeah, and let's just go back to what Tim just said there. We've been through a convulsion which has caused huge change in all our lives in lots of different ways. And the things that have affected our economy in the last year, the closure of shops in the high street, the increase of online shopping and home work, home work, sorry, home working, were things that were happening anyway. The so beer so is here. But what is it? Sort of you know, is it? In about, by about 2050, we had half a century of economic evolution overnight in the first lockdown. And now we've got a situation where we need to make the most of the situation we find ourselves in. You know, there are pension funds who are hugely invested in office blocks in city centres, which now the bosses who run those are going, why do I need to have an expensive office block when my workers are only going to come into the office a couple of days a week and they're going to be home working and I'm saving money on the bills? We need to have a chancellor now who's got the vision to help build the economy of the future. And here you've got Rishi Sunak talking about opening late, consuming as much as possible and going back to the economy of the past. Absolutely disastrous idea. Is, is that your um, interpretation, Tim? No, I'm, I'm not anywhere near as negative as that. You know, the, a lot of the sort of old uh, traditional shops have really suffered, you know, against Amazon and the other sort of parcel deliveries during lockdown. And Amazon have taken you know, even more um, market share. So giving them a little bit of help seems reasonable to me. But I think fundamentally what we do need from um, government is a look at the power of organisations like Amazon. Amazon do provide a really good service, but I think often their pricing policy um, could be putting uh, some businesses out of uh, business by cross-subsidising uh, the various profit lines that they have in their company. I won't go into all the details, but there are real competitive issues raised by the way that Amazon now is so dominant in certain sectors of the economy that they can subsidise other sectors. OK, and we're short of time. I'm going to try and squeeze in both... 6,087 people died of coronavirus. Of you. The headline is call centre Yesterday, with 70 deaths of coronavirus. Home, in the UK, I don't know about the Scotland online and Wales got their own numbers story, different. I think probably right and left will be equally outraged by um, a company which has sort of 380,000 staff around the world, but also does lots of work, call centre staff at health and education departments, and it's digital, um, is theoretically able to watch them at work and see if they're at their desks or if they're wearing their jammers. And you've got to ask for an excuse for go and get a glass of water. I mean, that wouldn't be acceptable in an office, never mind in your own damn home. And we should say that the um, the company says that uh, the remote scans wouldn't be used in Britain. Webcams for UK staff couldn't be operated remotely, would only be used for meetings and training. But um, Tim, what do you make of this? 
Well, uh, an, an employer obviously does want to know that if their staff are working from home, that the work is being done. And but then I would thought that could be done by you know, giving people a sort of target, the number of calls they have to answer, or something that was based on performance. Having a sort of camera that you are looking at you all the time in your home, that really does try to be a sort of big brother, and that must be a better way of doing this. Okay, we're going to take a break on that note. Uh, coming up, though, we're going to discuss Alex Salmon's attempt at a second act on the Scottish political stage. Back in a moment. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that, guys and girls. Give it a like, give it a comment, share it with your friends, and tell what you think about this. Is it right or is it wrong? See you next video, peace.